R3, R5, R7. I use those awesome cameras every day, yet this R6 Mark II has completely blown me away when using it in the field. So why am I likely not going to buy one? And what were the few things I didn't like about this camera? Let's find out. When I grabbed the R6 Mark II for the first time, I felt at home right away. Most of the buttons are in the perfect spot and the overall feel is fantastic. We have an updated joystick in the back, a newly designed on and off switch and a dedicated photo video switch on the left hand side. All of this is a huge improvement over the original R6 and the camera just feels great in my hand. From a design standpoint, the only Canon camera that I prefer over this body is the R3. On the back of the R6 Mark II we can see the same flip out screen design we're used to seeing on most Canon mirrorless cameras these days. And in addition to that the R6 sports an ISO wheel on top and one front and one back wheel. All in all a fantastic design and suitable for all shooting styles. The only thing I didn't really like about the design is the positioning of the photo and video switch. Being on the left hand side means that to be able to switch to video I have to take my hand off the lens and I have to take a camera off my face as well so I can't quickly switch between photo and video. The R6 Mark II is equipped with two SD card slots just like the original R6. Not amazingly fast but adequate I'd say. It also has the same LPE6NH, that's quite a mouthful, batteries that we can also find in the R5, R6 and R7. What actually surprised me a lot in the field was how light the R6 Mark II feels. It comes in at just 1.3 pounds or 588 grams, which is just fantastic and makes it very hand holdable with a large variety of lenses. You can also attach the BG R10 battery grip to the R6 Mark II, even though it's not a very pretty fit if you ask me. But it allows you to have two batteries in the camera which extends shooting time a lot and makes vertical shooting so much easier. Speaking about battery life, it's definitely far improved on the R6 Mark II compared to the R5 or the original R6. But I would still recommend to take at least two or three spare batteries with you just in case. The R6 Mark II comes with a 24 megapixel non-stacked sensor that delivers great image quality, good noise performance and offers us 4 megapixels more than the original R6. It has a relatively fast readout speed of 14 milliseconds, which is a bit faster than the R5 with 15.5 milliseconds and a lot slower than the R3 with a stacked sensor of 5.5 milliseconds. Why does that matter? Because the lower the readout speed, the less rolling shutter we have in the camera. One of the best features of the R6 Mark II is the class leading 40 frames per second we can get in the electronic shutter mode. I could actually capture moments that I didn't see with my bare eyes. That was awesome and something that I will miss going forward in my other camera bodies. What's great is that we can now select different frame rates in the electronic shutter mode, something we couldn't do on the original R6 that would only shoot at 20 frames per second. Whereas on the R6 Mark II we can now select 40 frames per second, 20 frames per second and 5 frames per second in the electronic shutter mode, giving you fantastic options for your needs there. The only downside with the electronic shutter mode is that it dumps down the files from 14 bit to 12 bit which means we're giving up a little bit of image quality. But nevertheless, the image quality is still great and unless you're pulling up dark shadows a lot, you shouldn't really notice much of a difference. I found the image quality to still be acceptable and so I used the R6 Mark II in the 40 frames per second electronic shutter mode exclusively because it was just so much fun. But let me warn you, you will end up taking a lot of images. However, you will basically never miss the moment and capture moments you didn't even see with your bare eyes. If you want to use flash on the R6 Mark II or have the highest quality 14-bit RAW files, you will need to use the mechanical shutter or the first curtain electronic shutter. The mechanical shutter allows you to adjust the frame rate to 12 frames per second, 5.5 frames per second or 3 frames per second. And the first curtain electronic shutter comes in at 12 frames per second, 7 frames per second or 3 frames per second. The advantage of the first curtain electronic shutter is that it has less shutter shock and allows you to take more sharp images, especially at slower shutter speed. So personally, I would recommend to either use the electronic shutter or the first curtain electronic shutter. And now the big question, is there a lot of rolling shutter with the R6 Mark II? And the answer is kind of yes and no. In most situations, you will probably not notice the rolling shutter at all. But if you're doing a lot of panning like birds in flight, and you're moving very fast with the bird, you'll definitely notice some angled trees in the background. Or if you're shooting a lot of sport, you'll probably see slightly distorted balls. Or if there's straight lines in the background, they will be likely a bit on an angle. What the R6 Mark II as well has an electronic shutter mode is a bit of warping and wobbling when you take a burst of images. 
you don't really see it in a single file, but if you take a larger burst of images and then flick through them quickly, you can see how the images are kind of moving and are a little bit distorted. It's not really a big issue, but it's definitely something that can be annoying if one of your subjects is slightly distorted. If you want to avoid this problem altogether, you can use the mechanical shutter mode or the first curtain electronic shutter mode where you won't have these wobbles. With all this speed and just two SD card slots available in the R6 Mark II, the buffer plays a crucial role and unfortunately it's not very large in the R6 Mark II. Depending on the ISO you're using and the scene you're photographing, you can take about 70 full RAW files in a burst before hitting the buffer and an unlimited amount of JPEGs. Now 70 files actually sound decent, however, when we consider that we're taking 40 frames per second, that's just under two seconds of photographing which is not that usable in the field. So personally I decided to use C-RAW. It makes the file size much smaller and I can basically see no difference between the raw files and the compressed raw files. So now shooting C-RAW, I can get over 100 images in a burst and that makes the camera a lot more usable. So I would definitely recommend switching to C-RAW once you get an R6 Mark II or most other Canon cameras for that matter. If you dial back the frame rate on the R6 Mark II to like 12 frames per second or 20 frames per second, and you zero, you will have a hard time hitting the buffer. There's one feature I know a lot of you guys will love about the R6 Mark II and that is the optional shutter sound in the electronic shutter mode. Personally, I like it completely silent, but I know a lot of you guys love getting a bit of an acoustic feedback when you're taking images. So this is something you can now adjust in the menu and have a louder or more quiet shutter sound. So that's pretty awesome. The EVF on the R6 Mark II is the same that we also find in the original R6. It's not the highest resolution, but it's definitely more than adequate. And you will only notice the lack of resolution when you shoot it side by side with an R5 or an R3, for instance. If you just have an R6, you will never notice that it has a lower resolution and it's still bigger than the R7, for instance. One question I get asked a lot is whether these new mirrorless cameras work well with the adapted EF lenses, and they definitely do. Before upgrading completely to the IF system, I've shot with a lot of adapted EF lenses and never had any trouble on any of the Canon mirrorless cameras, so there's no worries there. There's a few more interesting features on the R6 Mark II, and one of them is pre-burst, which you can enable in the menu. So when you half press the shutter button, the camera will start recording a constant loop of images. And when you actually press the shutter button and take your images, the camera will have already pre-recorded half a second before you actually hit the shutter button. So it's very hard to miss a crucial moment. However, there's a couple downsides to the pre-burst mode. And one is that it has to clear the buffer completely before you can shoot again. So if you engage pre-burst, take a few images, you then have to wait however long it takes until all the files are written to your SD card and you can't take another image until the buffer is clear. This is a big problem for me in the field. And the other issue is that pre-burst doesn't record single raw files. It combines all the files into one large file and you can then select the images that you want to use on the back of the camera or use Canon's DPP software to actually get the images onto a computer, which is also a bit of the pain. So while pre-burst is a pretty cool feature, the implementation is definitely suboptimal at the moment. There's another quite odd feature on the R6 Mark II and that is called a digital teleconverter, which I would recommend to not touch at all because it just gives you horrible image quality. It's basically just a digital crop into your image. And if you wanted to crop, you're much better off just taking normal raw files and then crop later on. The IBIS in combination with the image stabilization, especially on the new RF lenses, will give you a fantastic stable viewfinder and the ability to do handheld video and handheld low shutter speed. So all around very happy with that. Oh, and by the way, if you hear strange rattling when you shake the camera, that's also the IBIS and it's nothing wrong with your camera. My favorite feature on the R6 Mark II is definitely its improved and updated autofocus system. It's simply a joy to use and find subject with ease. It just knows where the bird is, it finds it from a large distance and tracks it very well. It has the same autofocus system and algorithms as Canon's flagship R3, and while the R3 focuses slightly faster, the R6 definitely has the better overall subject recognition and just knows what a lot of subjects are and finds them with ease and certainty. In the menu, we also have a few new options. For instance, the camera has an auto detect feature, so you don't have to specify the subject anymore that you want to track. The camera just can identify what you want to track. I guess only in certain situations where you have, for instance, animals and people and cars in the same shot, you might actually want to pick which subject the camera should be focusing on because otherwise it might get confused. And we also have the options, for instance, to select if the camera should focus on the right eye or the left eye. Simply said, 
The autofocus is what truly stands out on the R6 Mark II. It's super fast, super reliable, tracks very well, and overall just super fun and enjoyable to use. Look at this insane fly shot example, pretty much in the middle of the night, long after dark. I saw this magpie goose flying past and I thought, why not just try and photograph it? So I dialed in a really high ISO, wide open on the 100 to 500 millimeter lens and started to photograph the bird. And to my surprise, or shock I shall say, Basically every image was sharp in this series of shots which was truly amazing and a real testament to how well the autofocus tracks a bird even when it's very dark and against a very busy background. Like on all my Canon mirrorless cameras, I'm using double back button autofocus on the R6 Mark II. This gives me the best of both worlds. My base autofocus mode is spot autofocus without tracking. So whenever I press the star button, the camera will focus on wherever I have put my autofocus point and it's very easy to precisely focus on whatever I want. And when I hit the AF on button in the back of the camera, it will engage eye tracking. And as long as I hold down the AF on button, the camera will find the bird and track it all over my viewfinder. And if you want to learn all about how I set up the R6 Mark II, I will post a video about that very soon with all my settings and my best tricks on how to get the most out of the camera. If you're the owner of an f11 600 or 800 millimeter lens, you will also love the R6 Mark II. Because on most Canon cameras, the autofocus area is restricted to this small square in the middle of the image. However, on the R6 Mark II, you now have a much larger autofocus area available. So it's much easier to actually use these lenses. And I was also surprised how fast and accurate they worked with the R6 Mark II. So overall, these lenses of all cameras that I've used work the best on the R6 Mark II and actually perform very well in the field. You guys are always keen to know about high ISO performance and low light. So let's take a look at these two red capped Robin images, one taken at ISO 6400 and one taken at ISO 12800. And when we zoom into these, we see great detail, great sharpness and not much noise considering how high the ISOs are that we're using. So if we run these files to DX or Pure Raw 3 to denoise them with just a few clicks and then one of my pro sets, we can get a fantastic image out of these high ISO files. Compared to the original R6, the R6 Mark II performs quite similar when it comes to high ISO noise performance. So here's an image taken with the R6 and ISO 6400 and the R6 Mark II and ISO 6400. I think they're quite similar. In this example at ISO 6400, I can hardly tell a difference when it comes to the noise levels and the overall sort of image sharpness and details. Can you? The most fun by far I had with the R6 Mark II and the 100 to 500 millimeter lens and even the extenders. Look at this crazy example of a Pacific Golden Plover taken with the 100 to 500 millimeter lens and the two times extender wide open at f14. It's just amazing image quality and I was just super happy with the results that that combo produced. I said earlier that the R6 Mark II now has a much larger autofocusing area available with the Canon's f11 680mm lenses and that it focuses super fast with them, but that's not actually all. Check out this kookaburra image taken in low light with the 800mm lens, the details are just fantastic. And lastly, let's look a few lorikey. These guys just fired non-stop, but the R6 Mark II had no problem tracking the action. Here's two of them having a little disagreement while two others are cheering them on. This is the raw file and here's my final edited version. And if you guys want to know all about image editing, how to remove that little bit of stick and how I make a dull raw file look amazing, make sure to check out my process and masterclass down there in the description. What's great about the R6 Mark II that it doesn't only work with the more expensive lenses, but it also gets the most out of the cheaper lenses like the f11, 600 and 800 millimeter that perform exceptionally well with that camera. When it comes to filming, the R6 Mark II also offers as fantastic features and it's great to have the dedicated photo video switch. This is probably the area the R6 Mark II is the most improved compared to the original R6. The original R6 overheated a lot when filming in 4K and it was quite tedious and difficult to use that top dial to switch from photo to video. So this is much better resolved on the R6 Mark II and it's great to have basically no overheating on that camera. You can film 4K for hours and have no issues. On the R6 Mark II we get 4K60 and 4K30 oversampled with fantastic video autofocus. So I was super happy how the camera performs when it came to filming in the field. 
The only small downside for me is that we don't get 4K 120 frames per second. So no 4K slow motion available, but we do get 180 frames per second full HD available. So that's good, but I would have really loved to see 4K 120 available in this camera as well. The other thing the R6 Mark II doesn't offer is the all eye compression that most other more expensive Canon camera have. And it only has the lower quality IPB compression available, but again, the video quality is still pretty awesome. All in all, I think as a video camera, the R6 Mark II is quite fantastic. And it also has some awesome new features like that it gives priority to what you focus on. So if I'm filming myself, the camera is less likely to suddenly jump on the background. So if I had such a good time with the R6 Mark II in the field and it performed so well, why will I likely not add one to my bag? And the answer is actually quite simple comes down to the megapixels. Personally, I just love the 45 megapixels I can get from my R5 bodies. Because these days I like to shoot a little bit wider, so if a bird for instance raises their wings, I don't clip them. And then later on I can crop a little bit in and still have a really nice and large file. If you need to do a lot of cropping then it's definitely a little bit of a concern. In saying that, for most users and most use cases 24 megapixels is more than enough. I've shot with 8 megapixels, 16 megapixel, 22 megapixel cameras in the past and it was never an issue. But now having 45 megapixels available is something that I don't really want to give up anymore because it just gives me more flexibility in the field. Besides that, I already own Canon's R3 camera, which also has 24 megapixels but a much faster readout sensor. In saying that, I don't really use my R3 that much for photos either, but it's my main film camera and I'm currently filming on that camera as well. One advantage R3 has as a video camera for me over the R6 Mark II is that the batteries last longer because it has a much larger battery and it has 4K 120 frames per second available to me, which is quite important at times for me in the field. So as a dedicated video camera, the R3 also has a few advantages over the R6 Mark II for me. Where I could see myself using an R6 at some stage would be as a dedicated second video camera in the field because it has great video capabilities and is nice and light. If I didn't have an R3 already, I would definitely be quite tempted by the R6 Mark II, but I would have loved to see it every 30 plus megapixels and then I definitely couldn't have resisted to buy one. Personally, I think the R6 Mark II is a big step up from the original R6 when it comes to body design, autofocus abilities and video features and also having no overheating is great. Don't get me wrong, the original R6 is no slouch and still a fantastic camera that doesn't need upgrading, but the R6 Mark II simply feels more well-rounded and thought out overall. So if 24 megapixels is enough for you and not really a concern, this camera is pretty much a no-brainer. I loved using it in the field and had a fantastic time with it and really didn't want to send it back to Canon. So why don't you guys head over to my channel now and check out some of my other videos while I head back to the computer and do some editing so I can post some more videos for you guys very soon. Until then, I hope you enjoy your days and I will see you in my next video very soon. Oh, and also make sure to subscribe to the channel and let me know your thoughts in the comments. Bye guys.